I'm gonna give an overview of this computer that I made. Um, it is a 65 CO2 based computer, um, which has a, a, a static RAM chip that I pulled out of a uh, older 486 computer. It's like a, a cache chip, I think, um, but it works perfectly fine. It's just a normal uh, RAM chip. Uh, it has a SST flash chip, which I made a programmer for here, um, which uses multiple voltage levels for control. It uses a 12 volt input here, um, which is gated through the here through these uh, transistors here, and this is what now allows the Arduino to control uh, the write and the clear operations because the this particular chip uh, needs to have 12 volts applied to certain pins in order to erase it and to write data to it. Um, so there's a, a gating system in here to to allow the Arduino to control the 12 volt signal while also not letting it backfeed onto the tri-state buffers of the Arduino. Um, otherwise on here it has a single 7400 for address decoding. It's only using two gates um, for this particular design. Uh, it uses an Arduino Nano and the purpose of that is to generate the clock signal for the entire machine and to act as a serial I.O. device. It's it's piggybacking off of the Arduino's uh, chip to communicate via serial. Um, the reason it's generating the clock signal is a legacy reason. Uh, it's, this is based on an older design that I made where I used an Arduino Mega, which at that time I didn't have a, an EEPROM chip, so I was using the Arduino Mega, tying it in directly to the address and data bus, and was using the, the Arduino Mega as an EEPROM. Um, but as I got an actual EEPROM chip, I didn't need that. But um, just in terms of how the serial works, I wanted to make sure that the CPU was in sync with the Arduino. I didn't want it to catch the Arduino in some interrupt state or um, <clears throat> if, the, if the CPU is moving too quickly and then this was changing the state of the of the buffers, I didn't want it to get caught and I basically just want to, didn't want to lose serial data. I didn't want it to miss commands going in or, or data coming out of the machine. So to just keep everything simple, I decided to have the Arduino drive every, like dr just drive the clock signal for this chip. And that's really it. Um, it also does the reset signal for when it's first starting up, but then if everything else after that, um, it's very hands off. The only like, the only thing that does at that point is just the clock signal and the serial. Um, on here, I have a daughter board or expansion board, uh, which is at this point it's just a uh, it's two uh, four bit registers and a LED bar. And it has two different modes. There's a switch here to select between uh, either showing the data that's currently being written by any device on here, or it can be flipped over to the other mode, which allows it to be addressed as a specific device. Uh, it has its own memory mapped address at that point and can be just operated normally. Um, there is a... Uh, bus transceiver down here, which is mainly for this LED bar graph, but it also outputs to the pin out here to just ensure that the voltage levels don't drop too low, depending on what's attached to this. Um, so I can get it started up. So this does run off of USB. It uh, can actually run directly from the Arduino's power supply. Um, but I also have a uh, another supply up here with a voltage regulator. So I can run it on six volts and it will operate just fine. And draws about 150 or so milliamps on average. It's jumped up to 200, um, but it varies a lot depending on what it's doing. Um, you can see here as I uh, first started up the machine, you can see that's the data that's being written by either the CPU or the Arduino. In this case, it's just the CPU. Uh, the Arduino isn't doing anything yet. It's waiting, at this point, it's waiting for a command from the computer. So I plug it into my computer, and as I plug it into my laptop here, 
can see the power draw from this power supply has gone down to almost nothing. So it can be powered entirely off of the Arduino. Um, and I will go ahead and get the terminal up and running. So it's running at a uh, slower clock speed on purpose, just to sort of emphasize how it, how it's running right now. Um, I want to say it's probably running. What is this running at? Let's see. So it is running at 100 hertz. And from here, I can uh, run a debug program which is, well, this is currently running a monitor that I wrote in assembly. Um, all these lines with hash marks are from the Arduino. And once it's done its reset, it hands over full control to this computer and everything you see here is directly from the machine itself. So if I do um, examine address D000, that will set the, uh, jump address to that, to D000, and I can do run, and it will start running a uh, little Hello World program, which uh, uses most of the hardware, so I'm able to verify that everything works okay. Um, and I can flip this switch to set this, so it, it only is able to be accessed from its particular memory address. So if I, uh, if I reset this real quick, um, I have a button up here for reset that I haven't actually wired in yet, so I'm resetting it from the Arduino, um, but this will uh, tie into the NMI, which will allow me to reset it without having to reset the entire Arduino and all that. But if I do uh, write 8004 and then FF, for example, I press enter. So you can see all those lights that's showing FF in that particular register. But as I said, it's pretty slow because um, I intentionally slowed it down. So what I can do is I'll, I'll go in here and I will uh, set it back to its full speed. Okay, now I've uh, set it so that it's running at its full speed, which is about 200 kilohertz, more or less. Um, and from here, I can show it at its actual speed. So I will uh, pull this terminal back up and I will go to the, back to the, oops, I'll go back to the test program, which was there, and then run. Let's see, it's quite a bit faster now. And stop that. And I can examine memory, so I'll examine uh, the program I just ran, so I forget how big it is. I wanna say it's probably, I'll just do, I'll do that. It's probably big enough, so shows the memory contents in the EEPROM. Uh, it can also write commands uh, with a similar function. Um, but same as before, I can also write to that memory device or the uh, expansion board there. And I'll put it, set it to A0, for example, and hit enter. And see, it's pretty much instant. So that's basically it. Uh, what's kept me uh, somewhat sane during the coronavirus uh, lockdown. Uh, my next version of this, I want to remove the Arduino entirely, um, have it run off of a dedicated clock, have a better serial system in place, get a six, 6522 for uh, serial, or for uh, just uh, input output. Um, but yeah, that's about it.